Hi, I'm going to uh, install two bonus panels, 440 watt Trina jobbies. You've seen these in the uh, previous video. Uh, mounted these on the pergola roof here. And uh, yes, I do have room for uh, one more, but uh, you know, I can't um, cover up that sun thing over there. I've got room for one more, but I only had two spare panels. And I've got this uh, Hoy Miles micro inverter. I do have a four channel jobby of this. But so it is possible to expand it, but you've seen these in a previous video. I'll link it in if you haven't seen it. It's the uh, HMS 800T, so it's an 800 watt jobby, so a little bit under uh, rated, but that's okay for the two 440 watt panels. And it's a two channel micro inverter, so I'm going to uh, little um, wireless antenna, Wi Fi antenna there or whatever. I don't know, I haven't looked at how to set any of this up. I think, I presume it just goes, presume it just works, but uh, there's the AC output there. And uh, there's a 240 volt, of course. And uh, I've got a, bought a matching connector for that because it's a special, I, I don't know if anyone knows what that connector is. As far as I know, it's just a Hoy Miles uh, special. But uh, yeah, these are apparently really good uh, micro inverters, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it. And I'm gonna hook both these panels up um, to the generator input on the new DI micro inverter. So that is the plan today. I've had these installed for a month or so, um, but haven't had a chance to uh, install the micro inverter yet because uh, I had to get the DI system up and running. But uh, so I have to remove one of the panels and I'll mount the uh, DI inverter underneath. But yeah, let's go. So what I'll do now is uh, mount the micro inverter onto here, underneath uh, one of the panels here, and just make sure uh, there's enough lead length, uh, hopefully there is, uh, to get, because there's one connection there and there's one connection over there. Just need to see if the lead length is long enough to get over here. Hope so. Um, otherwise, I'll just mount it up there on that rail. No worries. So that's mounted under the panel there, and uh, I think we might have enough cable just to reach there. No worries, so I won't need an extender piece. And then uh, this panel will just go on top. And yep, just enough room for oh, snappity doo Might need two hands. <laughs> and here's the special uh, snowflake connector. Uh, that for the AC, of course, uh, just mains and uh, earth there. So screw terminals on the back. No worries. And uh, it's got uh, the uh, grommets and whatnot on the back. So it's all... Uh, Waterproof sealed, nice o-ring around there, nice o-ring around the front too on the mating uh, side of that. So it's pretty groovy. They're not particularly cheap, but uh, yeah, found a supplier on the, in Australia. All right, it's installed and it's working, I think. <laughs> So let me show you here. Okay, uh, so here's my solar assistant, which is hooked up to the uh, run on that Raspberry Pi, which is hooked up to the DI uh, micro inverter because DI provide their software is just absolute garbage. Don't even bother using it. So I have to use uh, solar assistant here. If we go into inverter here, we can see auxiliary down here and you can see auxiliary PV power, 622 watts. Nice. But it's got this generator power at 84 watts. I'll show you that in a minute, because I don't know what the heck's happening there. So any DI uh, inverter people, uh, please leave it in the comments. I find that uh, the DI inverter manual is like complete, but useless at the same time, because you just don't understand any of it. And I find that Solar Assistant actually renames things nicely so that I can actually understand them rather than the DI manual itself. It's really weird. Anyway, um, so let's go into charts here. And this is what I'm uh, doing at the moment. It's a nice solar day today. You can see the uh, yellow up there. It was terrible yesterday. But, uh, let's go down here to auxiliary PV power. And here it is. I can actually uh, expand the auxiliary PV power. If we can view that, there you go. Um, oh, and again, so this is the last 24 hours. And you can see yesterday when I uh, installed them here, first time use, I was actually peaking at around 800 watts here which matches the 800 watt capability of the inverter, um, which is great. And you can see it was just horribly overcast yesterday. So it only, you know, sun just peaked its uh, head out just a couple of times there and it peaked. And you can see today 
that uh, we're not, like we're up to 600, and it's a pretty nice day out there today, we're up to 625, I haven't seen a full solar day, so I'm not sure if this gets better, obviously this is some sort of shading down here, because the panels are on uh, the, because it's winter here, you've got to remember, it's winter here in Australia, these panels are actually facing almost ideal, north, north, west it's as north as we can get on our roof whereas all the other panels on my roof are hidden away um they're basically um east and west i've got them on both sides of my roof i we could put them on north but that would mean or north northwest really but that means that uh, the panels would be on front of the house and it's going to look crap wouldn't be Mrs. Eve, blog approved, yada, yada, yada. So we've put them um, up on the uh, east and west sides of the roof where you can't see them. So if you, you uh, stand in front of our house, you can't see any solar panels whatsoever, right? So yeah, that's the idea. Um, so not ideal, but these two new ones are ideal, but it looks like shading, just, you know, this is like just early morning scattered light, I guess. Um, and then, boom, all of a sudden... <laughs> <laughs> the, the it gets up full sun so i'm not sure if that's going to reach the 800 or not today we'll find out because it's only uh 10 a.m in the morning here now so yeah interesting but it does reach the 800 and this is interesting these are two 440 watt panels okay and we're maxing out the micro inverter in winter time right so my my other arrays that i've got typically I am 30 to 40% down in winter time, right? Even on a good solar insulation day, right? High solar insulation, um, not insulation, insulation, uh, which means high solar irradiance, basically. Uh, high solar irradiance day, I can be like 40% down in winter, which is what you expect, especially when you have non-ideal facing panels that aren't facing north because of the flat earth and how uh, you yanks out there have them uh, south we have them north okay so um yeah I, I was very surprised to see 800 watts peak out of there so it'll be interesting to see what i get today um it looks i don't know the weather today whether or not it's going to become overcast but it was perfect when i uh, left and uh, yeah we'll see if we can get a a perfect uh day there on the two new panels anyway it's, you know 600 watts that's a useful bit of extra uh, power there for the two panels of course it'll only get better in uh summertime and yeah i'll probably get severe shading um probably starting two o'clock something like that so i can actually show you the roof arrangement here we go you've probably seen this this is the drone shot of the new uh installation and of course so the these are facing basically uh west where the sun uh sets and then uh east over here where the sun rises but in summertime of course you know like when it's over the top like these will be really you know these will be really good but they're not ideal because north is out this side well it's actually kind of like down like that north so that's why i said the new panels are north north east so let me show you where they are you can see the pergola roof there, there it is there. So the two new panels are just there like that. So I, I could put a third one on there, but then you're going to get shading from the extra uh, roof here fairly quickly in the afternoon. But anyway, I only had two spare panels <laughs> and I had the two channel uh, micro inverter, but I do have the four channel Hoy Miles. Um, so, you know, it's possible, but that's a, uh, that's a sunroof uh, kind of thing for our pergola uh, there. So yeah, they're actually facing north. So we could actually put panels on the front of our house like this but we can't fit too many and then it's going to get shaded from here anyway and it's going to look crap and all that sort of jazz so these ones up the top you can't see um a few people have asked what is this tiny tiny, tiny little solar panel there that is for a uh, skylight one of those um you know it, it's an australian designed can't remember the name of it skylight that actually uh dims and you know fades as the sun fades and stuff like that so it actually works really well and we've got that inside uh the house over the kitchen bench um and it just yeah simulate because we don't get a lot of sun there um and that just helps um yeah just sort of give it that nice sort of like simulated sun skylighty kind of feel so i forgot to show you okay let's go back to the extra charts here now i mentioned that generator power this generator power 84 watts it just flats it sits there flat line at 84 watts because this is the generator port because the di is fairly unique hybrid inverter if you know of another one that does this uh, leave it in the comments down below but the generator port not only can you hook up like a diesel 
generator to it, you can actually hook up micro inverters like I'm doing now. And there's a little checkbox in the software that says micro inverter um, in there. And I turn that on and sure enough, and you can use it for some sort of load thing as well. I, I don't know what that is because um, it's already got an emergency load output, which I can hook an emergency load up to. But the generator port has some load capability. I'm, I don't know. The DI is so ridiculously flexible. Um, it just... <laughs> I got no idea. So if anyone knows why this sits at 84 watts like this, I just don't know what's going on there. Like, and it just sits there all the time. Like even at night time, it sits there at 84 watts. I got no idea. Why? Have I set it up wrong? I don't know. And anyway, the interesting thing is, you know how that AC couple feature, which gets my end phase stuff coming in, when I turn on the micro inverter feature, it disables the AC coupling. So I haven't verified, I think it's still there, because if you go into over here, <laughs> this is getting really quite complicated, okay? Yeah, I've disabled my battery uh, at the moment, by the way, because I'm fully charging my battery, because I just got two new batteries. Um, haven't installed them yet, I just want to fully charge them before, and then turn them off, and then fully instant, and then install the new ones, charge them to 100%, and then I can switch them all on, because the batteries have to match within one volt, apparently. I talked about this on the uh, forum just the other day. So yeah, you can see over here, auxiliary, okay, which is the generator input, uh, basically. <laughs> you know, whether or not it's called generator, or whether or not it's called auxiliary, uh, um, it does have AC couple stop capacity. Right, at 100%. And I don't exactly know what this means, right? These are the default values that are there, and it seems to work. And by the way, the Hoy Miles micro inverter just worked. I just hook it up. It, it took like five minutes for it to like, for everything to like switch on. I'm not sure if that was the DI or that was the Hoy Miles, but it just worked. So that little Wi Fi, you know, comms antenna on there, I got no idea what that does. Presumably, I can download, like, I think Hoy Miles have an app or something. I can probably talk to it or something like that. Um, so I might try that in another uh, video, but I haven't uh, tried that at all yet. Um, but yeah, it just worked. I hooked it up. Didn't have to enable anything. Great. Um, so yeah, I don't know. AC couple start capacity at 95% and AC couple stop capacity at 100%. And that's different. This is different to the AC couple option inside the DI menu, which switches off and grays out when I turn the micro inverters on. Yet the micro inverters, the auxiliary, the input seems to have this AC couple thing. So I'm not sure if that AC couples the grid, just like the end phase on the grid, just like the other one. I'm sorry this is all very confusing. For those who don't have a mental map like I do, I'm going to do a video where I draw diagrammatically everything, my entire system. Um, <laughs> it's complicated. Anyway, yeah, it's weird. So please, you DI inverter experts, um, yeah, leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, um, I think it re-enables, it, it, it has its own AC couple thing. But whether or not that AC couples the grid side, which is what the option inside the DI inverter has, I don't know. I, I can't access that from here, by the way. That's You've got to do that through the menu. Uh, menu. So it might be disabling the grid side AC couple because you can see that solar PV here is 3.2 kilowatts. And 2.8 kilowatts is going into the battery. Okay, so some of that's going into load because it has load priority, right? So the other end phase system should be producing more solar. So I'd expect more solar than that on a perfect day. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's going to suck. If it disables the grid side AC coupling, then I'm going to remove these panels because there is, you know, I am not going to sacrifice my 14 other end phase panels dumping energy into my battery for the sake of just these two generator input panels. So I don't know. I, I still have to I still have to work on this and figure out what's going on. Anyway, uh, yeah, my battery is charging up to 91%. So when that gets to 100, I don't want it to discharge because uh, I want to install the extra batteries. But anyway, it seems to be working because this auxiliary power was zero before um, I installed these. And now auxiliary power is going up to... You know, it peaks at exactly the 800 watts of the Hoy Miles, and it, oh yeah, it's dipped. It looks like we might have had some uh, cloud cover, a little bit of cloud cover come over there. I can, I don't have a window here in the lab. I have to go out <laughs> and down the corridor to actually see what the uh, sun's doing here. Um, but yeah, so there you go. 
it kind of sort of works, but I totally haven't figured it out yet what the how the AC couple stuff figures in. So, yeah, uh, I'll leave that for another day, another video. Um, if I don't shoot another video on this, um, then it works. But if I do, <laughs> and I want to shoot another angry video um, saying bloody DI and how they disable the AC coupling. So I don't know. DI experts, please leave it in the comments down below about the AC coupling thing. Because um, I do not want to give up my AC coupling grid side feature. So can it do both at the same time? I don't Hang on, I forgot to show you that I get this um, cool little uh, generator icon now that uh, pops up. And curiously, it has 81 watts on it. But I took this photo the other day when it actually might have been, it was heavily overcast, it might have been 81 watts generator. But yeah, that has now popped up. Uh, so that's now feeding energy into basically the box over in the DI box here. And then, um, yeah, those numbers don't add up though. So maybe the AC coupling is working. Maybe it is working based on this. Um, so the excess grid, yeah, because 0.6, coming from these panels, plus 0.08 coming from here, doesn't seem to make sense why you get a total of 1.24 charging into the battery. So maybe the AC coupling is working, but I need to do more on that. Catch you next time.